Hello, and welcome to Research the News. This week's episode is brought to you by Aldi Fairtrade Organic Coffee. Now, again, we're not big enough to have a real sponsor, so this is just something that I like. And my pitch for Aldi Fairtrade Organic Coffee is that this coffee is for those people who are true fiscal conservatives who want to spend wisely while helping people who deserve it. Because when you buy fair trade coffee, uh, it gets higher prices for the people producing the coffee. It's better social and environmental standards. Plus, Aldi is really cheap for those fiscal conservatives. So I pay six dollars for a whole box of coffee, bag of coffee, uh, which is like a half or a third of what it is at a Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. So uh, that's our free sponsor of the week. Be a true fiscal conservative. Help people, but save money while doing it. As always, we're live, so there's going to be no edits if you're listening to this on the podcast tomorrow. Um, And we're going to be bringing on Gretchen here, my co-host, right after our intro music. All right, Gretchen, welcome to Research the News. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good, good. Good seeing you. So I'm going to cover uh, what we talked about last week. Uh, cancel culture, virtue signaling. We had peace icon. What do you think of mm-hmm. peace? She was wonderful. She I, was. She was a lovely human being, which I've heard of her. I have a lot of musician friends in Pittsburgh and all of them have had wonderful things to say about her. And she totally lived up to the hype. Her whole family is great. So uh, yeah. hopefully maybe we can have all the family members on. That'll be there great. We go. Can, yeah. And they can maybe play music because uh, her sister Joy is a great artist as well. So, yeah, actually, this is my second free sponsorship of the week. Check out Joy Ike's Mr. Rogers cover song. Oh, uh, oh that'll just make day in the me neighborhood. cry. Oh, it's so good. She does a really upbeat, fun version of it. So, yeah. Um, but also after we did the show, both Gretchen and I posted on Facebook a poll about cancel culture. And some things that weren't political, just kind of fun things that we want canceled. And so uh, for anyone who's <laughs> like watching fun now, things. fun things, fun <laughs> things. We want. Everyone wants to be canceled. We're not going to do it just yet, though. So if you're watching this just to see if you made the, the cut, you're going to have to wait till the end. That's like that's good TV or whatever radio <laughs> podcast. Right. It's good podcasting. You know, hold people till the end uh, or you just skip through. If you're listening to the podcast, just skip through the last five <laughs> minutes and you'll be able to hear it tomorrow. So. And as always, uh, you can check out researchthenews.org, uh, which is our Wikipedia page with all of the uh, information, the articles that we're going to be talking about today. You can also go to researchthenews.com. There's the video history. There's the old podcast. And there's also a link to the wiki page. Um, but yeah, this week we are talking about bad decisions and repercussions. And uh, before we go into the game of what's your bias, I just want to say that This week, we're not having a guest. It's just going to be Gretchen and I, because one of the things I've heard from the first two weeks is, well, we really like Gretchen, but we want to hear Gretchen talk more. So uh, (laughs) no pressure. Nope. I mean, lots of pressure. I may just not actually speak for the rest of the time. I may just like stop, put all the pressure. If you want to talk, if you just want me to talk about my dogs the whole time, that can be arranged. (laughs) Actually, uh, I mean, I would love that. I mean, I think there should be a podcast where people just talk about their dogs. I'm sure there probably is, but that'll be when we start branching out into other podcasts, that can be uh, that can be your 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 side gig from research. I like it. But this week, we're going to start out talking about Andrew Cuomo uh, because he's obviously in the news for a few reasons. Uh, But before we get started, um, I just want to play what's your bias when it comes to Andrew Cuomo and uh I asked Gretchen who she wanted to have start this and she said me. So I'm going to go into my bias. <laughs> I actually had a friend. I didn't I don't know if I told you this, Gretchen, but I had a friend who sent me when when he first started with his pandemic response. Sent, she's uh, lives in New York. She's she's she calls herself a man, a Manhattan liberal where she's very socially liberal, but fiscally mm-hmm. she's still more conservative. Um, and she loved Cuomo. And I was listening to him and I was like, man. I like this guy. Like, I wish Mm -hmm. he was running for president. Like he actually, I mean, it seemed like he had control of the situation. And then I kept listening to him and I just, I disliked him more and more every time I heard him talk. Um, I may break out a really bad Andrew Cuomo uh, impersonation on the show. (laughs) I am terrible at accents and impersonations, but I, every now and then I can break out a decent Andrew Cuomo and it'll probably fail if I try it. But (laughs) the more I listen to him talk, the more I dislike the guy. It was more of like an arrogant, condescending attitude. Mm. I don't know. I just didn't like him. Um, But uh, I kind of fall on. There's two things that he's facing right now. There's sexual harassment charges and there's 
um, also charges. I mean, obviously what happened with the nursing home. So we'll talk mm-hmm. about what exactly that was. But I'm saying before we get started and before we explain the story, <clears throat> I it looks like he's guilty. But I'm also someone who's a big fan of letting due process play out. So if I had to be a if I had to, to be a jury right now, based on the information that's out there, I would say guilty on both accounts. But at the same time, I think there's a lot that needs to come out. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm I feel like for me, you know, we are innocent until proven guilty in this country, which I think is something we'll talk about. Because are you really innocent mm-hmm. if you're accused of things? Um, right. But I uh, I do not like Andrew Cuomo. All right. That was way too long. What's your, what's your bias, Gretchen? So, um, uh, we, we talked about this. I, um, the nursing home, um, stuff, obviously I agree with you hundred percent. It just, we need to like hear what happened. Did he do it on purpose? All this kind of stuff. Um, then when the sexual assault allegations started coming out, that's when my opinion started to shift mm. and it becomes personal at that point. I mean, um, I, I'm semi open about things that have happened to me, um, during college. Um, I think like a lot of women, um, I've been sexually harassed, whether it's catcalling or guys just inappropriately talking about your body <clears throat> or in my case, physical assault. Um, and so, and I know a lot of women who've gone through that. So that's where my bias comes from because, um, I automatically, and it's, it's because I've gone through it. I, my very first reaction is, well, he did it. You know, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what my first thought is. But then my, you know, the little voice in my back of my head is going, maybe not, maybe not give him credit, give him credit. He could, he could be like, you know, or something could have happened that was misconstrued. So in the back of my head, there's that little voice, but the, um, the sadness and emotional part of my past kind of, uh, takes me to a place that is hard to, uh, recoil from. Right. And I, uh, first off, I, I, I mean, thank you for sharing. And, um, I think that's something that's really difficult. I think that's, we talked mm-hmm. about this a little bit, um, as a guy, I mean, I, I've gone through some things in my life as a kid, but as an adult, I've never, I, I, I we've, I'm a six foot four guy. I've never walked down a street and worried. There's the woman who was just killed in London this week. And there's all those protests mm-hmm. and there's, I, I look at that and I just, I, I don't understand it. Like there's times yeah. where I've been, you know, a little nervous about being in a situation, um, uh, where it was a, you know, a, I remember one time I was in, actually it was my first international trip and I was in Italy and I was walking home because I couldn't find an Uber. And I went through some like really crazy areas. And it was the Such first time I remember actually like running back towards my hotel. I'm a grown man. Ooh. And I was like, uh, there's no one yeah. here and there's some weird stuff happening. <laughs> I and I remember just safe. trying to get back to a main road. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's a yeah. very unusual thing for me. Um, yeah. in general, I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I, I also being six, four, I've never had to be in a real fight, but people I think just kind of go, ah, I could, I mean, he's tall. So I feel like yeah. I don't want to mess with him, but if they did, <laughs> they would just probably destroy me. Cause I'm just, you know, I've never been in a fight. So, um, but that is, I, I appreciate you sharing. And, yeah. um, I think that's something that, uh, I, I think you'll have to remind me sometimes to maybe keep that in mind as I, as we go through this, if I, uh, yeah. If I'm, if I don't focus on that enough or if I don't think about the side of a woman, because I just never had to experience yeah. it. So, yeah. But with that being said, <clears throat> um, I think you wanted me to talk about kind of what happened, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'd love for you to go into the details. I mean, this is your show. So uh, you <laughs> sure. just tell me whatever you want me to do. And, uh, all right. So basically there's a couple things going on with Cuomo first. Um, the, the, and I, I think you had said this, not me. You said the mm-hmm. bigger issue is that it's oh, the yeah. nursing home scandal, correct? Yeah, I feel like it's um, because, and this is coming even for me, <laughs> because that they're just allegations. The sexual allegations are just allegations at this point. So I feel like the focus um, for a lot of people is the nursing home scandal. But I, I, I also feel like the... Um, the sexual assault and misconduct has kind of taken over that. Yes. And so we're not able to really f- focus on the, and I don't want to say the actual problem because that's not it. And it's, they could both it's be the problems. Thing, and, yeah, yeah, they're both problems, but the one that is immediate, the one that is we have the information for and we need to be focused on while right. the details of the others are still coming out. And then yeah. we can litigate that and go there. But I think like this is like super important to understand right now, specifically because we're still going through it. Not that those women are not going through some kind of trauma right. and to, to, to um, you know, make them feel like they're that 
is not important, but it is. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I'm feeling about it right now. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that, I mean, we can get into why that's taken over. I think obviously as a country, typically anything that involves sex and scandals is something Mm. that just goes to the front page. But there's also, I think some other underlying reasons when, you know, we talk about researching the news to find out what actually is underlying and making that come to the surface. But if you look at the background, basically Andrew Cuomo, Mr. Cuomo sexual as the news called him. And, um, you know, the, the, the star who won an Emmy for his presentation on, uh, COVID and, um, and, and let me just be clear. I forgot one part of my bias is again, I told you I didn't like the guy. So you, you just know that as I say these things there, you, you want to research the stuff yourself <laughs> to make sure that, well, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to put my personal spin on it, but, uh, he won an Emmy for for doing such a great job with his news conferences, and he was praised by everyone. And he was on his you know his brother's show on CNN, and they were mm-hmm. joking around while all this stuff was happening. And the thing that bothers me is there's a reporter that I mean, you and I talked a little bit about this this week, and you had never heard of Janice Dean, mm-hmm. and she is a reporter who is now I don't know if she, she was originally on Fox News, but she is now, and she's been talking about this for a while. Both of her husband's parents died in nursing homes in New York. Mm. And she was early on trying to bring this to the surface. And at one point Cuomo even said to her, you know, just go do the weather. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So oh, something along those lines, but that. yeah, mm-hmm. go back to doing the weather, um, just dismissing her totally. And so yeah. this has been on like around for a while. And basically um, what happened with, from, from the reports from uh, Letitia James, the attorney general is that he miscounted how many people died in nursing homes. And, uh, basically the number of deaths hasn't changed, but the number of deaths from nursing, nursing homes, if you were sick and you left the nursing home to go to a hospital because you caught COVID and died at the hospital, they were counting that as a hospital death hospital. as opposed to nursing home death, which <clears throat> they were doing it. There, his assistant came out and said, we did that because there was a government investigation, a federal government investigation. We were just trying to make our basically make ourselves look better. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is frustrating for a lot of people because, um, there were a, there was a ship that was sent up there from the federal government, mm-hmm. uh, the USS Mercy. I think that was the one in New York yeah. that was ready to accept people. And uh, there was also the Javits Center, which was turned mm-hmm. into a <clears throat> center for COVID. And neither of those were utilized by Governor Cuomo. Um, and he basically made a rule. He had executive power to do whatever he wanted. It was emergency power and said, OK, if you are sick with COVID, you have to go back. Nursing homes have to take you back. And we're going to send you back to the nursing home. So it was, it was a, it was, I don't, I, there's not one part of me that thinks he was trying to kill old people. Um, but that was the result of it because of poor, uh, execution. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong on any of that stuff. As far as you know, is that, did I go go too harsh on him? No, I mean, and I, I agree with you that I, I don't think he did it on purpose, but you know, one of the things that I was struck with just researching everything for this week's show is that it really matters to me how people react mm. when they get caught. That has a huge um, and I think a lot of people do, but I, I guess it just depends on who the person is, you know, what their their political base is like and how how far or not, and how high they are um, in their party or in their um and how much cred I guess they got. Yeah. But um, for me, I think it's the way he reacted. Um, oh, I froze, I think. Oh, there I am. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, but if, if uh, the way he reacted was dismissive and um, a lot of excuses. So it just when people do that, I automatically start going, what are you hiding? You know? Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, uh, clearly there's issues there and I mean, he hasn't apologized and it's one of those yeah. things where it's, it's a weird thing, but with politicians, I kind of expect them. I mean, it's not weird that I expect mm. them to lie, but I expect politicians to lie, but he tried this week. Did you see it? Did, did we talk about the cancel culture thing he tried bringing up? Yeah. 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 So this is Mr. You know, he's 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 a liberal and cancel culture hasn't existed. And then he started bringing up that this was cancel culture run amok and it was coming after him. That was like, OK, I feel like you shouldn't maybe use that term. That's like cancel cultural appropriation or something. You're taking that term from the right. Um, but he the bigger thing was he he basically portrayed himself as a political outsider. And it just right there. I was like, yeah. I just lost all. 
the guy was married to a Kennedy. His dad was governor. His brother's on CNN. And I just think if you're the outsider, then who are we? Like, how are, yeah. how are, how are Gretchen and Ray ever going to get into office when like we <laughs> like if he's the outsider and had to really struggle to get into office? Yeah. So when you start saying things like that with no apologies and then you start saying things that are just totally ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it's really I, I just feel like, well, I can't trust you about anything. I already right. didn't trust you as a politician. And now I, I can't trust you on anything. But it why feels like it? if. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It feels no, like. Yeah, I think you were going to ask me exactly what I was going to say. Okay, so I I wonder, like, what in the world? Why? Why didn't he just say we made a bad mistake? This was a horrible mistake. And we were doing what we thought was right at the time. And it was a horrible mistake. I mean, maybe they didn't think it was the right thing at the time. They were just doing it for political reasons. But I don't know. I feel like more people. I mean, I don't want to sound like I live in some like utopia, like everything's going to be great. But it's like if somebody really does talk about the mistake that they made and what they learned from that mistake and why they're not going to do it again and how they can fix the problem or say there is nothing we can do at this point. This was a horrible thing that happened. And, you know, going forward, we just know we can't do this, you know? Yeah. It just, well, and I, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So it's, well, I think, and he's a politician. So yeah. it's one of those things where like, I never expect that's the, that's one of the biggest issues I have with politicians or when, they, if you ask them, Hey, what's two plus two? And they're like, well, if you look at the theory of math, then you have to find out. And it's like, no, just answer the question. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like most politicians would be, it would be willing to say, Hey, we messed up here because this was yeah. something that was clearly, clearly a big mistake. But, yeah. um, I, I feel like I, I think, you know, this I'm, I don't want to talk about, uh, Trump on the show because it starts dividing people and it just, mm-hmm. it's, it's not a productive conversation because there's too many strong feelings. It's too soon. So yeah. we'll bring him up later. But I think if you look at the way he responds to things, it's very similar to the way that Cuomo responds to things where mm. it's, it's, uh, wait, it's not me. It was, it was something it's, else. He yeah. actually, at different times, he blamed God and took credit from God. Uh, I don't know if you saw these different times. <laughs> I but did, at one I point, saw was, that. Uh, why, why did God do this? Okay. That was my accent or my impression. And oh. it turned out to be British. I don't, that was so bad. Forget. He said, <laughs> why did God do this? Which was just crazy to me. And then at one point earlier, before this all broke, he was like, God didn't help these people. It was us. And it was like, wait a second. So you blame God when people died and then when it was like the vaccine it was like oh no it wasn't god just be clear like it was me andrew cuomo we did not god we did it um but why is it that you think i mean i think the answer to me the answer is uh i think twofold there's an easy answer and i think there's something a little deeper but why do you think the i mean we don't really talk about the nursing home part of it it's all about the sexual harassment stuff so what is your take on why that is the the headline from the news so i think whenever politicians become vulnerable, that's whenever people feel more comfortable coming out. Right. Mm. So it almost seems like when one person steps forward or something happens like this to a politician, people automatically are like, all right, this happened to me. Now's my chance to not, especially when you're talking about sexual assault. So coming from even my own personal thing that happened to me, I never did do anything about it because it wasn't worth, well, it could have been worth something, but it wasn't worth ruining my own life Interesting. for it. Um, cause the person that did it was like really well liked and everybody liked him and nobody really, you know, it was like, he's a sports guy and everybody in my hometown, like the sports guy. So it's like, it wasn't worth coming out with all of it to, to people from home. And I feel like this is like on a huge level. So it's like, all right, he's vulnerable. (laughs) Now's our chance to actually get something done about it. So whether it, you know, whether people are doing it for bad reasons or good reasons, it's it's like whenever you go through something that traumatic, it's almost like you, you make excuses to yourself why you can't come forward um, or why you shouldn't come forward. And then in this kind of a moment, when someone, someone is actually vulnerable, then you're like, oh, okay. Now maybe could be the time and I would be listened to. Interesting. Uh, whereas I wouldn't have been listened to before. I would have been dismissed, right? Um, there's no merit to that. And then people just kind of move on and forget. But and then an it's kind of taking over because you said it, it bleed when it bleeds, it leads. So yeah. it really took over. Well, you kind of took my my under the radar answer first. You've actually mm. taken both of them. So good job. I mean, this really is your show this week. But um, 
I mean, I, 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 I feel like, yeah, number one, if it's sex involved, yeah. uh, it's going to take the, the news coverage. But I think, um, it's interesting that we have, um, I, I think there's a couple reasons why it has kind of taken over. Uh, I think what you said is something that I wouldn't think of again. I think this goes back to, there is a reality that as a yeah. man, we need to listen to women because that's something I wouldn't really have thought of at all. Um, yeah. But I also think there's something on top of it that makes total sense what you said. Um, But I think there's also a part where you got to look at the politics and it's in politics. Mm. It's always you're Mm. you're the star of the show. You're amazing until you're not useful to me anymore. And um, the first thing I thought of when uh, it came out about the nursing home scandal was. I looked up, I didn't hear, I had never heard Letitia James's name before. I mean, I had heard in passing, but nothing, mm-hmm. nothing as, as bold as what was happening with the, uh, the scandal. And I was like, I wonder if she wants to run for governor. And when I looked it up, I was like, oh, she does want to run for governor mm-hmm. and she's more progressive than, uh, Andrew Cuomo. And than I was like, him. ah, yeah. and then when everything else started happening, I was like, um, it was interesting to me because, uh, I think that there were a lot of people focused on the nursing home scandal mm-hmm. and then these women came forward and, it distracted from the nursing home scandal, which Mm -hmm. also it wasn't just New York that had this happen. And I think that's the interesting part and the, the part that's, that's as important because the whole idea, what Cuomo got caught for was changing the numbers and fudging the numbers. Mm -hmm. But when you look at a lot of different States, New Jersey, um, Pennsylvania, I forget there were some other States, but they were doing the same thing where they were forcing Mm -hmm. people into nursing homes. Tom Ridge and Pennsylvania, his, um, Health and Human Services Secretary is now the Assistant Health and Human Cer- Serv- Health and Human Services Secretary for the U.S. government now. So mm-hmm. uh, she was promoted um, despite the fact that, that was a pretty poor job in Pennsylvania with the nursing homes. Um, and there was also a whole big scandal with uh, she had taken her <coughs> mom out of a nursing home, but sent other mm-hmm. people in and it wasn't really mm-hmm. investigated. And that's a part I probably I have from what I've looked at. It doesn't seem like it was as bad as it sounded, but you never really saw a real investigation into this. And I think clearly I, I'm not saying at all. Let me be very clear. I'm not saying these women came out because mm-hmm. uh, of, of trying to cover up the nursing sure. home scandal, but I am saying that I think that a lot of news organizations, uh, politicians, this is a great way to number one, be able to, to, you know, help these women be heard. And at the same time, cover up the fact that it wasn't just Cuomo doing this. There were other governors Mm. that, um, in in reality, and this is, they were mostly Democrat governors that did that. And so it's like Mm. a good thing for the party that there's something else to kind of cover up this scandal. And again, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Mm. Um, but I think this is something you and I talked about. I'd like to hear you talk a little more uh, about is, um, you know, what is, I want to hear more about why, why, how difficult it is to come out and talk Mm. about these things. And what is the standard before you say, all right, for for you, what is a standard to say, Hey, I've heard enough. I'm done. Cause it sounds like you may already be there with Cuomo, but I'm not sure. Um, You mean with like, with the the allegations, with 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 the the sexual allegations, (laughs) because I, to me, I mean, would, would you agree that something bad happened with the nursing home? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty, it's kind of hard to deny that at this point. I mean, you know, I mean, they're going to litigate of course, and they should and figure out exactly what happened and why and all that. But right. So what um, what would you, what do you, would you say is a good outcome there? Are you talking about impeachment, resign, resigning, waiting? What would be, I think uh, it's going to end up being probably just waiting. Cause I, mm -hmm. I think there's been a precedent kind of set in the last few years that it's like bad, bad stuff can happen. And if you have enough support from your base, it's, you're not going to get pushed out. Um, and it basically comes down to him that he would have to resign um, yeah. unless they do impeach him. I mean, that could be a real, um, a real outcome. I mean, if I they, don't think he's going to resign. I don't know. Maybe no, I'm wrong, but he doesn't seem like the kind of guy no. who's going to resign <laughs> oh, now for the, the sexual yeah. allegation. So from what I understand and, and I, what, the, what I've seen so far, there's not a lot of physical evidence. And when I, when I say physical, mm. I mean like emails, text messages, but there yeah. was a text message that to me was if you if you if you take and extrapolate it with all of what the women are saying versus what was said in the email, um, basically his his uh, assistant, Stephanie Benton, it was Cuomo's secretary, sent an email to one of the accusers and said, you mm. uh, the, the governor wants you to know you could be sisters talking about looking up one of his ex-girlfriends online. So look up my ex-girlfriend. You could be sisters, except you're the better looking sister. 
And in my head, that set up some alarm bells because not only, it wasn't Cuomo oh, saying man. that via text. He actually told his assistant to say that. And nowhere in that chain did she say, M- M- Governor, maybe this isn't a good idea. This isn't appropriate. Yeah. Right. I feel like if you and I were like had a guest in the show and was like, hey, you know, Gretchen, can you email this woman and tell her she she's like, looks just like my ex, but prettier. I feel like you'd be like, Ray, you're being creepy. Please don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I know better. I think, yeah. I, you know, but it's, it's weird to me that like that seems like she something did. that a lot of people would dismiss but to me it's mm. something bigger because like clearly there's some kind of issue that that is acceptable yeah. to his assistant and it's something that's normal or um, is it that he just wields so much power that she wants to keep her job either way it's not good for him it's not a good look yeah. so yeah but that's other than that it's mostly and again it's allegations and that doesn't mean mm. they're not true i'm just saying that right now it hasn't been proven yet that that's happened yeah. so based on what you've seen what is the line where you say i i think with with you having some experience in this oh, area yeah. Um, are you still under the mindset of we should wait and hear everything out? Should there be a trial or are you kind of like, all right, I'm done with him. These women are meant to be believed and yeah. we believe them and we kick them out. Right. It's interesting. Cause I put this out to Facebook, uh, social media just to see what people would say. Cause I wasn't quite sure. I mean, I, I, I had like my initial reaction, but then my, that little voice in the back of my head obviously is going, you, you ha- they have to go through everything. They can't just say he did it. The hard part is, is when once it's we were talking about this, once it's said, it's hard to go back. Right. So when someone is accused of sexual assault or just misconduct, saying something weird to somebody, you can't unhear that. Um, and voters can't unhear that. Um, so I think. Going through the full process, obviously, is what should happen. Will it happen? I don't know. Um, I don't know if more more women will come forward. That's always something that if if it starts piling on, then, you know, you're looking at the things that people are accusing him of. Some of them are like creepy old man stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we all know what that is, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not excusing that. It's just that happens a lot uh, to girls. So we are not used to it, but we see it a lot. Um, so well, I'm going to I'm going to yeah. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to press you here, though. I'm not, this, okay. If we if we ever have politicians in the show, I'm going to say no politician answers. So uh, <laughs> I'm saying right now, based on the evidence that you've seen. No, I, I don't do you think, think he should be removed or do you think it should be? We should. Wait no, for no, we yeah, need to wait. We need to wait. We need to hear everything because I I. I I know the hard part, and we were talking about this the other day, the hard part is you have your bias, you have the person that you you like, and you don't want to believe that they could ever do something like that. But at the same time, being a girl, I know that that stuff happens. I know that even the most normal of guys can do it. Hello. Uh, But it's like, you know, we want to believe we want to and we 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 should listen. We should listen. But blindly believing without. And this is the hard part, because and you and I talked about this. It is sometimes so difficult to prove. And that's why this is such a hard thing to talk about, because, you know, me, I can't prove it. I can't prove it. It's my word against his like there were. There was another person, but they would not fall on my side. Yeah. So that had to do with why I didn't come forward, too. So, you know, whenever women come forward and they don't have any evidence, it becomes really, really difficult. And then it does become a he said, she said. And the hard part about this is you, you start looking at this is going to ruin this person's life. Right. How much. And, and how awful do I feel for that woman that she's gone through such trauma? But if in the very small chance that she could be lying, this could ruin his life. Um, right. In the process, she's possibly ruining hers, too. Or who knows? She may get a book deal out of it. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, you're looking at all of these different play- things and there. It's hitting you from all these different directions and. It is such a difficult thing to navigate, I think, for even just the average person. And that's why a lot of us are just like, nope, cut and dry out, you know, yeah. and that's how a lot of my friends were on social media. They're like, he needs to get out like this yeah. isn't even even the shred of him possibly doing this. He needs to go. And I understand that I do. 
I think we talked about this a little bit offline, and I think this is the part that gets tricky um, as a guy. Now, Mm -hmm. again, I I will never understand what it's like to be a woman in that situation because I Mm -hmm. and in general, I don't I don't think I ever have to worry about someone sexually assaulting me at this point in my life. Um, But I've been through some of that, uh, you know, before Mm -hmm. in my life. And um, it does stick with you. And there is like a a, a, I understand I understand general conceptions of it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I have an issue, though. Uh, you know, I, 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 this is not an, ep- we're not going to talk about, um, you know, the guilt or innocence mm-hmm. of different people. Uh, mm-hmm. but when we look at something like Brett Kavanaugh, forget what you believe personally, mm-hmm. just in that situation, one of two things happens there. One of those two people are lying. So either it's Brett Kavanaugh or it's Christine Blasey Ford. One of those two people are lying. Either it happened or it didn't. And whatever you believe personally, if you look at just the outcomes of that accusation, um, it's, it's typically worse for the man with the accusations if they're not true, mm-hmm. but it's worse for the woman of the actual act. So the act mm-hmm. is worse, like lying versus sexually assaulting someone. Act, yeah. If I had to pick which one's worse, 100% it's yeah. sexual assault. Yeah. But when you look at the aftermath of it and when you, cause you said, well, you know, she may ruin her life or she may get a book deal. Mm-hmm. And you look at something like Christine Blasey Ford, and this is not a Kavanaugh's innocent or Blasey mm-hmm. Ford is lying mm-hmm. or it, it's not picking a side, but, um, there are things that came out. She came out and accused him very specifically. And there was one person that backed her up. It was a friend of hers. Um, and this, this article, there's an article about this on the uh, research, the news.org page, but her name was Leland Kaiser. And she actually said, basically at first she said she believed Blasey Ford cause, and she kind of backed her up. But then she said she no longer did. Um, and she realized there were a lot of inconsistencies with the story, even as she thought back, like, why would that have actually happened? So at first as a friend, she was like, I'm, I'm, I'm there for you. I'm going to support you. Clearly it happened. And then she kind of said, no, that actually, none of this really adds up. Um, and then if you look at what happened with Blazy Ford, you know, she, I, I will say that, that she, we talked about how she had uh, raised a lot of money through a GoFundMe offline. Mm-hmm. I think it was near a million dollars and I'm not sure exactly what happened, but she did say she was going to give some of that money to trauma victims, which was, which mm-hmm. was good. I think sharing good, that, yeah. but I'm not sure what the, what the amount was, but she became, you know, a distinguished alumni award at university of North Carolina for speaking truth to power. She was, uh, Time Magazine included her on its like person of the year list, uh, the short list, like to the, the finalists. She had that GoFundMe. Um, and really, it's one of those things where uh, she had a t- if that was real, Kavanaugh should be in you know in jail. But like if that was fake, that's a pretty strong accusation. And that's where I struggle with, because I just as a guy, this is not a. You know, a very clear, it's not like, oh, poor me as a, as a man, I have to go through this, but <laughs> it's come to a point where even me personally, and I, and I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Like I have had interactions with women at work now where it's like, I have to take this whole other level where there's, it's not like bad jokes or there's not things that I would say that are inappropriate, but I'm just so afraid of saying afraid anything of saying that may be yeah. taken the wrong way that it makes situations very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And that is I think there's a level, there's always a balance. And where is that line? Because, you know, like you said, well, he's a kind of a creepy old man. We shouldn't accept the creepy old man lines. And like, there's things that we should just be like, all right, look, that's bad. And then there's some things where I hear them and I just go, that doesn't actually sound that bad. Like with Cuomo, there were some things that were clearly disgusting. There was the one part where he potentially groped a woman you know, way out of bounds. But there was one where he said like, you know, that's a nice dress. And you and I talked about this. Like, yeah. If I, if I hear, I've heard women like objectify me and I love it. I love being objectified by a woman. And that's the thing where, you know, <laughs> it as is a like woman, the difference between a guy and a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the thing when I hear your story, I can't understand what you go through. And I think yeah. that's the thing that has to be heard as well. Yeah. Um, not in a poor, poor man kind of way, but like, yeah, there is a situation where it's like, we, we need to be taught instead of yelled at. I think as men, yeah. we have to hear like, oh, what you're, what you're saying probably isn't right. And I've had friends of mine that have told me, you know, like, Hey, maybe say it this way, or maybe, you know, don't say girl. If the woman's like in her fifties, say woman. And I, I tend to just generalize guy, girl, that typically is my slang, Mm -hmm. but I've tried to be more careful about it. It's more Mm -hmm. respectful, but we have to be taught this and it, you don't get taught that by being screamed at or being, you know, uh, being accused after the fact where at the time Mm -hmm. you may not have been corrected. Um, so I think that has to be a factor in the equation, but where is that line? Um, 
for you. And do you feel bad for men at all? Do you feel bad for us guys <laughs> that like to be objectified and, and no. try very hard not to be, yeah, I didn't think you would. I didn't think you would. So I, you know, here's the thing. I, I know, um, guys that are, they can, they get uncomfortable if women, you know, say stuff to them. I'm sure they're very few, but I know a lot of women who really like attention. They mm, like it. Um, and it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, okay. So I'm going to share a little story. So yesterday, right. this happened yesterday, which is hysterical that it happened yesterday. Um, I went to one of our wonderful thrift shops in Pittsburgh. Shout out to the red, white, and blue. Um, but I was standing there and people usually talk to me because of my hair. Everybody, you know, it's usually the very first thing people, and usually it's people telling me they like it. For the people listening on the podcast, it's shaved with like, uh, what is that? What would you call them? Lightning bolts on the side? Yeah, there's just yeah. two lines there right now. Yeah. It looks cool. I had a it's lightning cool bolt at hair. one point. Yeah. <laughs> I've had everything anyway, in my hair. So you're anyway, the, people like first to start, hair. yes. First, he said, your hair is sick. And I was like, thanks. And I, I'm always super, I'm a happy person. So I'm, mm. I was very, very happy. I'm like, thanks, man. That's really nice of you to say. And he left. And then he, I saw him turn around and come back. And he said, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. But even with a mask on, you are totally hot. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. Thanks. And I was like, okay. And the funny thing was I was wearing like an oversized um, sweater coat okay, with a t-shirt and jeans and, and my Puma sneakers. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to look cute right now. I specifically didn't look cute. I didn't have makeup on. I didn't, you know, I just went to the thrift store and uh, this, and I kind of all, I took it as a compliment. Like it was like, I'm not trying to look cute. Thank you. But then in the back of my head, I'm going, that was probably really inappropriate. Mm. But at the same time, it was like, okay, thanks. That was nice of you. Okay, See, thanks. And that and there yeah. are moments. And I think it has to do with, honestly, I mean, even with the mask on, like they're in their eyes. That sounds so weird, but it's like you can see in their eyes. Uh whether there's something nefarious going on. In Interesting. Their brain. Yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes guys, it's like I was telling uh, Ray uh, the other day when we were talking about this, um, we used to go, my girlfriends and I used to go to, um, we we affectionately called it the meat market. Um, it was a club in downtown Pittsburgh and you would just be surrounded by guys. And we actually had things where we would like save each other when the situation would get like about, they were about to start touching us and we were like, let's go, you know, and we'd like grab each other. Um you could see it in their eyes. It was not coming over to be like, oh, hey, you look really nice. Do you want to dance? No, 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 no. This was about to be like, we're going to touch you. if very mm -hmm. inappropriate. You know what I mean? So you could see it in their faces. So this is the thing. It's like when you're when you're a female and you're going out and you, you have these interactions with guys, you start to become leery of men in general. Yeah. Um, and even when and like you said, like you're thinking about these things that you're saying, which is great. Because a lot of guys don't, they don't have that filter. Um, they just say it. And I think it quite honestly, I think it comes from just when we were kids, like, oh, the, the boys will be boys mentality. Um, always just a boy. It's just what boys do in the locker room mentality too. Like we've heard, oh, it's just locker room talk. It's like, all right, locker room talk. Are you going to say that to my face? You know? Mm. Um, but I think it, it really does come down to their approach approach but even sometimes that's not gonna help <laughs> so I, I i would say uh, this is interesting so i i feel like there's a couple things here you're talking about like the locker room talk i think that's one of the yeah. things i want to uh, talk about and also i'm not gonna go through the whole story but one of my favorite interactions during covid was i was at uh, lowe's and there was this woman who came in who was a very tall woman and she walked past me as i was waiting in the line for a return and I turned to uh, look at her and she turned to look at me. So we were both like, oh, we passed each other and we turned back to look. And I was like, oh, and then I realized I had my mask on. So I like tried to smile at her, but then it was like, I, she can't see any smiles. So and I just look creepy because I'm like, I'm going to just keep staring and you can't tell. And so I was like, ah, whatever. And so I just went back, did my return and I go back to the uh, vacuum cleaners because I'm an adult now and I was looking to buy one. 
<laughs> and I hear this woman come over and she's like, so you're looking for a vacuum. I turn, it's her. It's the girl that had passed me up. Mm. So we ended up talking, we exchanged numbers and I called a friend of mine. I was like, I have, this should be a TV show, like a reality show of like, I don't know what this girl looks like, but this is like an yeah. exciting moment. Yeah. But it's so, I mean, any guy, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what it, it, if a girl looks at you, I mean, I don't want to say any guy that's gross generalization, but most guys, no, I, the girl yeah, looks I, at I you, not it. one, I have never gone like, Oh, I can't believe yes. she's looking at me for my body. Like it's every time it's like, yeah, like yeah. still got it, Ray, whatever. <laughs> And I think that's something where it's, it's clearly a difference. And I, yeah, I feel like that's something that we have to, I, 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 I think in general, women tend to get more attention and mm. uh, clearly get way more attention than guys do. Yeah. And deservedly so, because most of us are just hairy and gross and, you know, we don't really keep, take care of ourselves, but <laughs> I think that's a totally different reaction. Even when you talk about the locker talk though, I think that's something. So I, yeah. I see the difference in how men and women react, but yeah. I hear the locker talk conversation a lot. And it's like, well, guys, boys will be boys. Guys talk. I have heard you girls talk when you don't yeah. think guys are around or you're comfortable around a guy. And I'm just going to say there's times where like I I've, I've tried very hard in my life not to be a locker room talk kind of guy. It's just not my thing, but and I'm not, I'm not someone who's like, uh, I'm not a, uh, you know, uh, nervous to hear things or embarrassed, but you guys make me blush sometimes with how you talk. Like, and so I think it's a, a, a do you think there's a double standard there? Because I think, I think there's clearly a difference in reactions and how men treat women versus how women treat men. I think we treat women yeah. worse, uh, just yeah. uh, generalizing in general, but yeah. when with talking, I feel like in private, are you, are you girls really better than guys? <laughs> Well, okay, so it's it's public versus private, right? In, public yeah, versus yeah. private. So it's like, yeah, when I am super comfortable with people in general, I, I tend to share more. Mm -hmm. I tend to get a little bit of a potty mouth. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I, you get more comfortable around people. So, and we even said, like, the first, I said, like, I apologize about that. We, uh, we were talking about virtue projecting and virtue signaling. So, um, it, it kind of is that when you get into private, right? Mm -hmm. You're uh, these guys and you're trying to be one of the guys. So then you start talking these, you know, these really, you might be a little bit more crass. You might be a little bit more um, open yeah. or, you know, using words that you would not ever use around. But you're still using people. one of the guys. And this is where I'm going to like, for me yeah. in general, I know my friends now, I mean, when we were younger, I'm not, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to comment on when we were younger. Cause we were, you know, I uh, think anyone under totally. the age of 24 should be excluded from like any of this cancel talk. Cause your brains aren't fully functioning. And I look back at me at 22 and I'm just like, <laughs> you were an idiot, Ray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but even even then, I feel like and now, like when I talk with my friends, like if anyone brings up locker talk, I mean, usually we if it's someone new to the group, we're kind of like, oh, we don't want this guy around. So like we kind yeah. of exclude that. But like I said, I think I think women. So don't don't bring the don't blame the guys in this one. I I agree with you on the public <laughs> displays, but I'm going to push back on those private displays because quite honestly, I've uh I you have told me um these 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 conversations that you've heard women have, and I have never had a conversation mm. like that. There are words that will never ever ever leave my mouth. Yeah. Like they may, you know like some people hate the word moist. Yeah, well, that's just, yeah, that should be, that word should like, be canceled. Ugh, right. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there are, are words that are in locker room talk that I would never in my life say. And when girls say it, it creeps me out. So it's like, um, and I don't think actually any of my female friends, well, maybe one. Well, there look at us. One. We are, yeah. so we are signaling our virtue right now. We're like, our friends are so great that we don't have to They're worry about so this. We are, nice. Shout out to the Morgantown crew. There you go. And, and <laughs> we are, we are just such good people that we don't have to worry about this. But so one thing that um, I do want to talk about with the Cuomo stuff, um, oh yeah. getting mm -hmm. back to getting back to that, something that bothers me and it doesn't matter who's doing it is, and I, I even hate this term, but I feel like it's mm -hmm. easier way to explain it is the what about ism. Yeah. Um, what I hope we start doing as a country and as a society as just looking at things in the moment. And I, let me be clear. I'm not perfect. I do the, I do this as well, but I'm trying very hard to get away mm. from it. I think if there's one thing I would like to get across today in this podcast is that 
Cuomo should be held to Cuomo's standards for what Cuomo did, not what any other person has done in a similar yeah. situation. If he and if whether it's a you know it, typically it's if it's a Democrat, then you you hear people saying, well, on the Republican side, we'll see, take him down. Or if if it's and if it's a Democrat, they're saying, no, 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 let's look into mm-hmm. it. And if it was flipped, <clears throat> you know, if this was a Republican governor, they'd be like the Democrats would say, take him down. And Republicans would be like, no, 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 yeah. we have to have due process. Just be consistent. There was actually a great yeah. quote I saw this week. There was um, a woman, Alexi McCammond, who just got to be the Teen Vogue editor. And in college, she apparently made some anti uh, Asian jokes. Mm. And there was someone on Twitter that was saying, uh, you know, basically the, the person was conservative and was going after and like <clears throat> said something along the lines of, you know, normally I would say cancel culture is bad, but she tried to cancel Charles Barkley. So I, she gets what she deserves. <laughs> and I heard someone respond to him in this quote. I'm taking this from some random Twitter that was like Bill's Mafia Four or something. It was a random <laughs> Twitter account. But he said the sympathy may be lower, but the defense <clears throat> should be no less vigorous. The principle is all that matters. <clears throat> and there was so much deep thought from bill's mafia Four, or whatever whatever the guy's name was the sympathy may be lower but the defense should be no less vigorous the principle is all that matters and i think when you talk about they were talking specifically about how they were defending against just not giving someone due process but i think that flips for giving someone the same level of anger that you would Scrutiny. if it was yeah. your party or against your party and that's something interesting i've seen with um you know, kind of with with Cuomo is I've seen people who are liberal, but not progr- like far left saying things like, well, we got to wait for this to play out. And I see a lot of my friends who are progressive, far left, you know, they are saying, no, like y'all are terrible because uh, he clearly did this and he should be taken out of office now. Mm-hmm. And Again, I don't agree with that. I'm someone who I wait for due process. It looks bad, yeah. but, you know, let's it's do really interesting. Yeah. I, when I. Yeah. When I put this on Facebook, it was kind of interesting because the people that I thought would be like, no, he should wait. You know, we should wait. They were like, get out. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Whoa. And I mean, I I totally understand. Um, Yeah, it it was very interesting. We've been putting a lot of polls on our personal pages, and it's been very, very interesting to see how our circle of friends are reacting to things. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, I think you actually posted an article that's on, um, on the, on the wiki page about holding government accountable. And I think you may have had some things you want to talk about with, but two things pop up out of that article that I think apply to what you're (laughs) just saying there. Um, number one, uh, that talks about in the founding of our government, the key to the, the Republic. So we are not a democracy, a republic, a democratic republic. And it's all about making sure that um, as Madison, Washington, Hamilton all wrote, it's the accountability of the government. It needs to be governed, meaning like we can't just give control of the government, and let them do whatever they want. Um, and they warned against the practice of endorsing or dismissing an idea merely because it's characterized as liberal or conservative. And um, in general, that's one of the things I don't know if I ever told you this, but when I was at uh, Mount Rushmore uh, in September, I went there on a trip through the national parks. I get so mad when I saw that on the national at the Mount Rushmore uh, plate for George Washington, they listed him as a federalist as his political party. He did not have a political party. He actually said, I don't want I'm not part of a political party. Political parties will be the death of this country. And I mean, how prescient was that, you know, 200 and some years ago that he said that that would be the death of the country. I'm not saying we're in a death spiral, but I'm saying that over time we've seen that political parties have been so disruptive and so destructive to our our democracy. And the article actually said, uh, endorsing or dismissing an idea because it's characterized as liberal or conservative is a lazy citizen's way of avoiding the hard work of citizenship, Mm -hmm. which requires analysis of the relative merits of an idea or proposal. Basically all I'm saying is, I like the article you posted. I think that goes yeah. along with this where we have to take a look at the situation and decide if he is um, guilty or not and then take him out of office. But I'm going to say that no matter how bad the charge is, um, mm. how how guilty they look, we still deserve due process, I think. Yeah. Um, but for you, uh, how how much do apologies hold weight? So if, mm-hmm. if Andrew Cuomo would have came out instead of just defending it and blaming God and taking credit from God when worthwhile, if he would have just came out and said, you know, I screwed up and um, talking specifically about the nursing, nursing home deaths, yeah. I screwed up. This was an issue. <clears throat> what, what do you think would have happened? 
Or how would it, you have taken it? Yeah. Whenever I was looking up these, like, how do we, how do we hold um, public officials responsible? Um, it was, it was, it, I, I knew in the back of my, you know, head, like how, right. Voting and all these kinds of things. But um, I didn't think about just our regular bias and how we look at our candidates uh, or people from our own political parties and how much weight things like them apologizing for things, um, how much weight that can really hold. Yeah. So if if he if he was like, I was so wrong, this is horrible. I realized that I did this and this was bad. I think, quite honestly, a lot of Democrats would be like, well, slow down now. Everybody, yeah. just sl-, you know what I mean? Like everybody would be like, slow down. Um, but since, you know, the 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 I didn't do it and it's their fault and their fault and their fault, that kind of stuff makes people just go shoo, shoo, yeah. just get out. Um so, uh, you know, one of these articles, I think it was in the Atlantic, um, they interviewed, um, I can't remember his name. Um, they interviewed a guy and they were just talking about the, the tricky psychology to mm-hmm. holding government accountability, um, uh, accountable because we're, we have all these things going on in the back of our heads constantly that we're not paying attention to. So, you know, you're, you're, um, and government is trying to, they're almost making decisions based on what they think they can get away with. Yeah. So, and that's not, uh, usually a, a, a coherent thought that they're having, hopefully, um, some of them, it's just like, it's an automatic, like, okay, my constituents want this. So this is my response and, you know, or this is the decision I'm going to make. Um, when you get to like someone like Cuomo or someone that wields a lot of power, um, they start feeling like they can act however they want because they're not going to cave into what their, you know, what their constituents are asking for, uh, which I find that's the moment where I think a lot of people start turning on right. candidates because they're they're realizing that they're in it for their own preservation and not for the people who um, elected them. So I agree with most of that. And I, mm. I would say, though, that I do think people would have still came after him because they if you're a politician and you smell blood in the water, oh, sure. they wouldn't have stopped. If you, they wouldn't have stopped. But what I do no, think no, no. what people would have stopped are people like me. Yeah, um, that would have solved two things. If he would have just apologized and said, hey, this was a this was a problem. I made mm. a mistake. Number one, uh, like you said, he took accountability for it because if he's not taking accountability and saying mm. it's it's God's fault, it's whoever else's fault. It's at one point in one of his press conferences, he said, look, look, we're I'm not going to blame anybody here. If you want to blame someone, blame the federal government. And I was like, wait, OK, again, that was a terrible impersonation. But it was like, wait, you just said we're not going to blame anyone. And then you blame mm. the federal government. Then you blame somebody. Yeah. But it's not taking accountability <laughs> shows that you're not going to learn from the issues and you're not going right. to change. Yeah. And the second part is that also would have solved the problem I have with him with his arrogance. Like he really mm. is an arrogant person. Mm. Uh, this is a very random reference, but if any of the the listeners have uh, seen the commercial for Quicken with that guy who has like the weird smile and he's talking about how he, his wife thinks he's a catch. He's one of the most smug and arrogant, or if you're an office fan, smudge and arrogant people I've ever seen. And he reminds me of Cuomo uh, in personality. And so I feel like that would have solved part of the arrogance issue too, where it's like, oh wait, this guy can actually like, take take uh, responsibility and say he's going to change it because at the core yeah. of it, I think that's the important part. <clears throat> the issue to me isn't that he made a mistake because mm. we were all dealing with something that mm-hmm. we did not know how to deal with. There were things happening, yeah. I, but I, I, two parts were frustrating for me. Number one, it became very political um, in the sense of, you know, you had the, the, the mercy ship there from the federal mm. government. You had the Javits center. They went almost unused. The press didn't cover that. There was nothing in the press about how that was being wasted. Uh, He was on CNN laughing, joking. He won all these awards. He wrote a book about how to properly manage a crisis in the middle of the crisis. It was just he got held as this hero. And it Mm -hmm. and even when you're you're knocked off your pedestal, you still can't say, "Okay, I made this one mistake. Like people, if he would have just said that, he would have been okay in the public's eye. But I think there's still an issue there. The bigger issue for me is the fact that. Because he was politically expedient, the people who were, were wanted to get uh, the 
president out of office um, were, were very clear about here's an example. And they were talking about him as the attorney general and there was mm-hmm. nothing he could do that was wrong. But these issues showed up a long time ago. And then right after the election, they all came out. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem. And if you flip it and if this was something with with a Republican governor and the same thing happened and we, they waited until after the election to release these things, I'd be just as frustrated. Mm-hmm. I feel like the the role of the news and this is why we call it research the news yeah. is to bring mm. any 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 re- reporter any journalist any investigator should be investigating if you're on fox news you should be investigating republicans just as much as you're investigating democrats and if something doesn't make sense you should be asking hard questions and if you're on cnn you shouldn't be doing an interview with your brother in the middle of a pandemic you should be doing it with someone who's going to challenge you on the hard things why janice dean was saying hey my parents were killed because of this policy why is no one investigating this was mm. months and months ago that this was coming out and everyone brushed her aside, including Cuomo with that very dismissive talk of, we'll just go be a weather girl. Like that's, that's frustrating. So I, I agree with you. I don't think at this point though, now they want him out of office. So I don't think that the, the politicians would stop coming after him, but I do mm-hmm. think people would be a lot more lenient and say, yeah, he, he apologized. And yeah, it was a, that's it was what I, yeah. Yeah, that's what I kind of assumed. It would be more people, not politicians, because, yeah, like you said, like there's blood in the water. Like that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, as someone who is considered running for office and still wants to, that's my my I feel like I don't know how anyone good does it. Like, I feel like if I run for office, I'm probably not a good person. I feel like that that quote is going to be used against me in the future. <laughs> no, Someone's going to put that in a future campaign. It's a real end. thing, though. Like, you really do have to have a pretty major ego to run for mm. public office, right? Or not. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the second time you've said something which seemed like you were, like, subtweeting me, to use a uh, different term. But You gave me crap first first episode. Of, it, it's coming back. Well, you know, if you want me to tell people that you were in Portland doing some more Antifa burning last night like you were. She loves Antifa people. She has uh she even has the shirt with the Antifa flag on I it. I do. Think. No, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, it just I was again, we, we gotta be better at sh- saying things are sarcasm because that no, we actually sounded like you had the both shirt. Both incredibly sarcastic people. <laughs> I really believe you have an Antifa shirt though now. That's the uh I don't. Thing. It's all yeah. I have is Puma. I'm wearing one right now. It's like all I got. <laughs> all right. So now that we, I think we've, we've solved the issue. I think, I mean, basically, uh, Cuomo, if we ran the world, Ray, if we ran the world, how, how different would it be? I don't, I don't think that actually would be a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like more so me than you. I think, oh, come yeah, on, man. It's me. I would, I would you could handle up. all the like big policy things. I can like make it, make sure people don't drive on the left side of the road or like, oh my goodness. Wait, are you talking about like driving in the fast lane or the, driving yes, slow? I hate in the that fast crap. Lane? Yeah. Okay. You're stealing my, okay. We're going to, okay. Gonna that go was and, one of mine too. Okay. Never okay. mind. <laughs> all right. Maybe, maybe we should team up because I feel like any politician who would say that if you drive, I have a whole theory in that. Okay, let's wait okay. because we're going to start here shortly. The, uh, the 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 polls from the Facebook page about what should be canceled. But before we do, is there anything else you want to say? I mean, is there anything? Okay, we always want to wrap up with what you may have learned from the conversation about this specific instance. And is there anything else you want to say about um, about Cuomo before we wrap up? Um, I think one of the, the things that well, I, I know that one of the things that I continually learn about myself is that my personal, um, the things that I go in my personal life really do take precedent when I'm making decisions about who to trust in my personal life, but also with candidates. Um, but I understand that my bias comes in a lot. It comes in a lot. And I, I think whenever we were, we were having a conversation the other day and I, I got, quite upset with Ray. Um, uh, not to the point of hating him. I assured him that, but, um, uh, and really it was more, I was starting to get frustrated with myself. And I think that is a big hurdle for the normal person. Uh, I consider myself like a normal person, uh, a normal news, um, somebody that does not watch news 24 seven, that, that just takes in what they're seeing and what they're hearing and what they're reading, um, on a smaller, uh, level. Mm. Um, but I think having that moment of realization, um, it, it started to make me slow down and keep my emotions in check and uh, realizing that 
And I think this is the big thing too. Like everybody, hate, nobody likes to be told they're wrong. Nobody likes to, you know, if like you're being unreasonable. <laughs> and that, that was a moment when Ray said, I think you're being unreasonable. And I was like, do you really think I'm being unreasonable? Really? I don't feel like I'm being unreasonable. And that moment, it's like, when that happens, you, you, you turn back on yourself and then you start to get mad at yourself. But at the same time, it was a learning moment for me. And so I hope that that had a bigger impact than just this week. I hope it, it continues, um, my growth as a human in this crazy world that we have. Well, I mean, I like, I think that's something where, you know, I, this is, I think typically a lot of times I come at things from, and we've talked about this as well. Oh, mm-hmm. I come at it from too logical of a perspective. I think, lo- mm-hmm. well, logically this makes sense. So why, yeah. why are you worried about it? I mean, if you do this, this is going to happen. And if it doesn't work, let's move on. I, I just, I'm a very, I'm a very analytical thinker, mm-hmm. but what I've realized from you um, like today, like, and I appreciate the fact that you took that to heart and I think it, for me, it's, you know, I'll often say things like, well, give me the data, like look up an article, mm. like, look, where did you get that news from? Because I, I'm too much of a consumer of news. I, I enjoy trying <laughs> to find out what the truth is between all of the headlines and between the different, uh, news sources, what they're saying. Um, so that logical side, I'm pretty good at, but the emotional right. side, I often kind of gloss over and something that you said today, that's really going to stick with me. I mean, already I, I told you before, like the thought of, not not knowing what it's like to walk down the street and being afraid of mm-hmm. any kind of assault, sexual assault is is something I won't be able to experience. And I, I need to get better at just thinking about what it's like to be in 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 your head. But at the beginning, um, you <clears throat> talked about specifically um, how when women were those women coming out, once one woman comes out, uh, then it makes it more comfortable because women are coming out. Because to me, that's something I've looked at and it, it hasn't made a lot of logical sense where mm. I see, well, why are there six women now? Why didn't they say something mm. before? It, and that doesn't mean I don't believe them. It just means like why this doesn't make logical sense in my head. And that was yeah. the first time someone's explained it to me as well, you see someone else doing it and then that person in power seems more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that was actually a big thing for me to hear this week. So I thank Mm -hmm. you for that because Mm -hmm. like I told Gretchen, even in our conversation about, um, you know, being reasonable, I said, you know, make sure you call me out in times when I'm not being reasonable (laughs) or when I'm not seeing the, the, uh, the the emotional side of things. And I think Mm -hmm. that is a, to me, a, a powerful moment of, I think as men, um, you know, we have to, we have to think about it, not from, being the way we've been raised and boys will be boys and all this Mm. different, all these different things. We feel generally safe in dark alleys. We feel generally safe and we can kind of understand that because it's like, Oh, well we're the, you know, typically we're a little bigger. We've, you know, uh, we don't have to worry about those things, but the emotional (laughs) side of it, that protection from having someone in power doing these things, um, that's something I think we need to be better at as men. So thank you Mm -hmm. for that. And that's something that actually will definitely stick with me and make me, hopefully a better person too. So look at that. We're helping look each other that. be better man. <laughs> and I think that actually leads right into something. Um, you know, I've quoted Tupac before. Um, yes. I think he's one of the greatest philosophers, if not the greatest of the 20th century, but the person I think that rivals him is Mr. Fred Rogers. My fave. I love Fred Rogers. I um, love him too. And one of he the makes me cry all like any time, any and every time I cry, I just cry. <laughs> I, I don't want to say this, but I, I can. Okay. So, um, there's, there's very few movies that get me choked up and I watched mm. the documentary of him, not the Tom Hanks movie, but the documentary. Yeah. And I, I couldn't help it. I was on a date with oh. uh, my girlfriend at the time and I just, I had a lot and she was fine. She was like consoling me and I'm like trying so hard not to bring, like bring the tears out. And I will say quick side note, I walked outside and there's a great scene in the movie where Mr. Rogers brings up this, this kid in a wheelchair that he had in his show. And 20 years later, he sees this kid at a, mm. um, they surprised him at a reward show and he ran up on stage, knew his name, oh. looked so happy. And I walk outside after, uh, the movie, I'm like already emotional. <laughs> it was down in a place called the waterfront in Pittsburgh. There's all kinds of shops. And, uh, I see a, a, a kid who was about 18 years old, um, who we had helped with Zogo, my, my product that I work on full time that helps people with disabilities. And I went over to talk to him and he uses an eye typer. So he uses his eyes to type with because he can't speak. And we caught up. I asked him how he's doing. And then at the end, he was like, 
would you mind giving me a platonic kiss on the cheek? And I was like, come on, man. Like after all oh. this, and the, I, I came out, I was trying to like, I let, I let the girl I was dating go into the store so I could like calm down. Then, then there's this kid that we helped out. Who's like, you know, just so friendly. Oh. And it, it was, I mean, I was, I was a mess after that. Oh, so I'm I, sure. I may cut this from the podcast just so people don't know that I have a, a oh, real heart. No, but, uh, no you have I'll a heart. Oh. I'll leave it in. <laughs> But with that being said, one of the things we talked about was what is the alternative to cancel culture that still still allows us to fix the problems? And I found a great quote from Mr. Rogers that I think is important. Now, to be clear, this was Mr. Rogers quoting a guy named Dr. William Orr, but it was written in his book. There's a link to the video of him talking about it on the researchthenews.org page. But he says, there's one thing that evil cannot stand, and that is forgiveness. And uh, I, I think that's a powerful thing because, I mean, in general, I, I, I don't think there's a lot of forgiveness for Cuomo when it comes to the sexual assault part of it. But I think mm-hmm. if you take that out, take that out of the equation and you look at the nursing home deaths, if he was really trying to do the best thing he could do at the time and that yeah. happened and he took responsibility for it. Yeah. And, and even if he does now, even if he comes out now and says, you know what, I'm, yeah. I'm, he should have done it a long time ago. Yeah. But there's still a level where we have to say, all right, as a society, we're going to forgive you. We're going to move on. Um, and there's one thing that evil cannot stand and that's forgiveness. And for me, the alternative to cancel culture is saying, Hey, you know what? You made a mistake. Um, whether that's a governor, whether that's someone who posted something inappropriate, Mm. let's talk through, let's see Mm -hmm. what you could do better next time. Here's how you can grow as a person. And if that person doesn't accept responsibility, you can't forgive them because they're not, they're not asking for it. Um, but I think that's that to me is something so a way we can solve it. So I anything like it. to add to that or do you want to wrap up with our um, Mr. Rogers is amazing. <laughs> perfect. All right. All right. So we are you ready to do now what we're going to do here? Oh, my so gosh. We, I'm we so went excited. On, we went on Facebook <laughs> and we threw out some things. I'm actually going to start out with two that I have come up with uh, personally that I, I really think things that should be canceled. We mm-hmm. posted this on Facebook as non-political things that deserve to be canceled. So. With that being said, um, I am going to throw out some things here and then you're going to throw out some things and we're going to just decide if if you agree or disagree that these things should be canceled out of real life. This is my first one. This was not taken from the Facebook page. Tours when you visit someone's house for the first time. <laughs> I Oh, I kind of love that, though. You love them? Oh, my goodness. Like. Listen, my friend Steph and my friend Steph and Dave just bought this unreal house on the slopes in Pittsburgh, and it is the sickest house I've ever seen. And I was like, this is like cribs. I need a tour right now. Like I was like, she was, it was her birthday party. And I was like, now I want it now. I mean, if they have like an outdoor deck with a great view, but in general, they it's like. They have I mean, five decks. <laughs> okay. I have a one bedroom condo and people come over and how about the tour? And I'm like, there's a room, there's the kitchen, uh, there's a bathroom over there. Like, what else do you want to see? Like, there's not much there, but For I me, think, yeah, go ahead. I, uh, well, so you like these tours. I don't. I All love right. them. Well, and okay. I am like, uh, I am, um, home improvement crazy right now. Cause I, yeah. I purchased a home. I took out all of the carpets and refinished the floors and all of my friends have been like following this journey on Instagram. And so when people have come, they're like, I want to see it all. And I'm like, let's go. And so we like traipse all through the house. So yeah, I'm like, I'm totally into it. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, Although we're I can observers. understand if you if you have a tiny place, I can understand why you wouldn't yeah, want to do yeah. it. Yeah. Number two, and I think okay. I think I think this one's easy to agree on because you brought this up already. Driving slow in the passing lane. <sighs> Come on, people. It's a it's, passing. First of all, lane. it's against the law. Right. <laughs> right. If and I, I don't know why in the world people would still do it. It's it's terrible. If I I and actually have this. said that if I run for governor someday, my, I'm going to run strictly on the fact that if there's no more speeding tickets, only reckless driving tickets. And that could be that you're driving too fast and weaving or <laughs> like that you're it. driving too slow in the fast lane. That's it. Because you could be going 85 and being safe or you can be going mm. 55 in a passing lane and Truth. being extremely dangerous because if you don't Truth. see someone coming up. Oh, man. All right. So we agree Dude, there. So I we're get one it. For yeah. Two. Yep. Blowing. And this one, these ones come from the Facebook page. Blowing out candles on a birthday cake. I agreed with Ooh. this one. Yeah, that's gross. It's gross it's, anymore. It's gross, right? Yeah. I never noticed, and I'm a germaphobe, and I never noticed how gross it was. Yeah, right. it really is disgusting. <laughs> Two for three. <laughs> are you, I forget. Are you a hockey fan? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to call out by name the person who posted this. His name is Dan Snyder. Okay. Uh, Tom Wilson. Do you know who Tom Wilson oh, no, is? No, I don't know who Tom Wilson he is. He's the though. goon, the biggest goon in hockey. He plays for the Washington Capitals, and the man just tries to end careers. <laughs> 
I'm just going to say that you agree with it if you ever saw his hits because you're a kind person and you would hate him. So we're going to agree on that one because it's so bad. So bad. (laughs) Sometimes hockey players can get a little crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, this guy is way beyond the bar. All right. And my last one, before we go into the frustrated guy section, I'm going to let you go next. We're going to come back to the frustrated guy section. (laughs) But school fundraisers, and it specifically called out school fundraisers where you have to pay twice as much for something that you don't need. That then only portion a small portion of the money goes to the, the actual kids. thing. Yeah. How do you feel about school fundraisers? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't like that at all. But you know I will I th- say that growing up, I was a cheerleader, and we had to sell Mariana's hoagies, mm. and they were legit, and everybody looked forward to them. So it depends I mean, on what you're selling. I do like selling. hoagies, but here's Although, what I thought of. Yeah, go ahead. When I heard that, I immediately popped in my head was this is baby basically baby's first pyramid scheme. This is like yeah. the introduction. All these people selling school fundraisers are going to be selling shakes <laughs> that allow you to lose 50 pounds over the course of two days later on in life. On hey, Facebook. can I talk to you about something that I'm doing? No, 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 no you can't. No, I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see your message. Sorry. I just died. Sorry. I'm dead. <laughs> died. Uh, I'm if you have a shake that can bring me back to life, we're good. All right. Those yeah, are my, first, my top five. And then I'm coming back to the <laughs> frustrated guy section. But you go. All right, you, mine you give me the intro and I'll tell you if I agree. We're amazing. Okay. Um, the first one is, and we we both had this one on our people had said this gender reveal parties, but mm. that's kind of political, like at this point. Um I actually this one was I think fun. once okay, you set something on fire, so I agree with that one because that once you set what, something on yes. fire, I feel like um I feel like you <laughs> definitely have to uh, get rid of them. Yes. That, and that was her, that was her point. She's like, you're just basically setting things on fire to right. like yell about an body parts. On fire. Why are yeah. you doing this? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a lot, I, since I'm a dance teacher, a lot of my dancer friends wrote age inappropriate dance costumes and mid dress for children. And I was like, Ooh, yeah. Okay. All I can think about is the always sunny episode for Frank's little beauties. If you have not seen the episode, yes. it mocks children's beauty pageants, which someone the actually posted that in my wall. It's creep yeah. factors. High. I agree. Creep factors high. Get rid of crop tops. Um, nine to five and the 40 plus hour work week. Interesting. So they would, again, I feel like that's political, but a they little. would be more, let me guess, Bernie Sanders supporter. Uh, they could have been, but I think it was based on um, the way that the conversation went. It was more about how people function during COVID mm. and they didn't have to physically go to their job to do yeah. their job. Okay. And so how it would maybe open up childcare yeah. payments and they don't have to take their kids to childcare and they could have their kids at home. Home and they don't have to. Right. You know. I can get behind some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, asking women when they will get married or pregnant. Mm, I think it's actually always really good to ask if a woman's pregnant. That's like the number one rule I go by is if I see a woman, I, even if she doesn't look pregnant, I just are you pregnant? It's a great way to start a conversation. This so. happened to me. I, I Wait, was did uh, they asked if you're pregnant or they, they asked, asked if I was pregnant. I was oh working goodness. at Walmart. This was when I first moved to Pittsburgh. I worked at Walmart to feed my dance habit. And um, I was working in the jewelry department and I was wearing an empire waist shirt. It's okay if you don't have a clue what that is. It's I where the, yeah. the, 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 there's like a shelf kind of section at the top where it kind of, it's gathered. All right. Okay, it's okay. gathered under the chest. So I was wearing this cute little shirt that had little cap sleeves. And it was really sweet. And this woman, I'm helping her look at things. And she goes, when are you due? Ooh. And I was like, what? <laughs> See, luckily for me, I never ran into that personally because I watched an action. I'm not going to say who, but a family member of mine was at a Memorial Day party when I was about 15 and said to someone there, oh, Oh, we'll say your name was Susie. Susie, I didn't know you were pregnant. They're like, I'm not. And the look (gasps) on her face made me realize if I if I met a woman who was or if I saw a woman on an operating table ready to give birth until she says the words, I'm pregnant, I'm not asking. I don't care exa- how pregnant that's you the look. Rule. That's the that rule. Is never, the rule. Ever, that is the rule. Never, 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 how, ever, never. How awful. I mean, I know how awful I felt in that yeah. moment. I'm like, I go, well, I'm burning this shirt. <laughs> and she started to laugh. And I was like, I am not pregnant. And she was like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. And I was oh. like, basically, you look fat today, Gretchen. OK, yeah. great. Um, plastic bags and unneeded packaging. Interesting. All right. They were like Aldi. Aldi doesn't make you, you know, Aldi doesn't have plastic bags. They do have it in packaging, but, um, this one's great. Bras. Oh yeah. I I already got rid of mine. Never, never. (laughs) 
had to worry you about can tell that, that a so. lot of mine were women yeah. that were doing this um one that i put in and it got the most one of the most likes was daylight savings time mm, yeah i actually had a few people on my wall say that as well yeah so. And it's I perfect. Like that's, yeah. yeah. One of my one of my friends lives in Arizona and she's like, we already don't. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, and I was like, nice. oh, man. All right. And my last one, I'm going to give you my All last right. one. And it had probably the most likes on my thread. And it was one that I threw out because I drive in the car so much. Yeah. Trucks with testicles. Oh, yeah. No, those are those are terrible. And everybody was like, yeah. Yeah, no. You're 100%, compensating 100% for agree. something, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so I think we agree. I think I agree in most of yours as well. I will throw these out. We don't have to go through each one individually. I'm just going to say this is the frustrated guy section. Uh, <laughs> diamond engagement <laughs> rings, which was tied on mine for most liked with gender reveals. Yep. Greeting cards. Valentine's Day, which basically I think you can wrap those up with anything that Hallmark is involved in. I think yeah. Hallmark is actually the, <laughs> the, the, the devil. Um, yeah. I think, and I, I actually am all for getting rid of all of those things. Uh, yes. Diamond engagement rings. There's actually kind of a, I mean, some people just thought it was a waste of money, which I agreed yeah. with. And it's also like, you know, blood diamonds and it's just mm-hmm. not a good, and let's get rid of diamond engagement rings. I think that's terrible. Yeah. An expensive weddings kind, kind of tied it all together because yeah. really for me, I said, you know, I, I talked about how they should have, like, we should have an episode on financial planning here because if you go into debt, paying oh. for a wedding that's not a great way. Maybe that's why you have so many divorces because you just go into debt and immediately after getting married for something that's going to last one day. And to me, go get married in a beach somewhere. Whoever wants to come, (sighs) they'll come. And if they don't come, they may send you a gift anyway because they feel bad they can't come. So you save money there. I feel like that's the way to go. But I will say there are two things new to me that actually brought, made me think, uh, number one, baby shoes. I don't have any kids. But I asked, I was like, why? Uh, I wasn't really sure. And they said they shouldn't wear shoes until they're getting ready to walk. Mo- and because they're unnecessary uh, expenses. So you don't really need to need to pay for no, it. You don't and need two, them. food eating competitions, which I've been a part of many Quaker steak and lube wing <laughs> eating competitions. And uh, I thought they were talking about it just being gross, but they actually said it was about gluttony. And I thought this was the, oh. the compromise we came to. Which was, well, what if every time you went to a food competition, because there's so many people in the world who need food and you're just yeah. shoving your face, it's like Tom's shoes. You, you have to go and like donate to a, a nonprofit like, like World that. Vision to like, you know, uh, yeah. to, to, to make sure that you're helping someone in need. So speaking of uh, the person who posted that comment, we're talking this week about prison reform and we may be oh. talking about that soon on the show. So mm-hmm. not sure if it's going to be next week or not, but prison reform will be coming up. So. Anything else you want to say about the cancel list before we wrap up? Um, I want to pick a fight with one of your posters. They said Ooh. pickles. Oh. Pickles. Really? Yeah. Pickles. You, you're a big pickle fan? Oh, my. <laughs> Dill or sweet? Dill. No sweet. Okay. Can't handle sweet. I like the sweet Dill pickles, is the actually. way to go. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I think that was. It's actually funny. Do you like you Miracle up. Whip too? No. no. Oh. <laughs> First off, I don't really. I've tried very hard not to eat uh, mayonnaise anymore, but if I'm going to, it's definitely. No, it's actually, new. Duke's. It's a Southern mayonnaise I found that's actually really good. Duke's oh, really? is like the way to go. I used to be a Hellman's guy, but um, switched yeah. to Duke's. So Joe, who posted that comment, because I remember, because yes. I actually asked him, like, any pickles or all pickles. He and I actually did a brief podcast about eight nine years ago so really yeah yeah Yeah. we actually did how about that man it was for the old website yeah it was a long time (laughs) a long time ago so yeah you're picking it i think you were just latently angry that he was my first podcast partner so yeah probably i was in there somewhere even though i didn't know (laughs) (laughs) so wrapping up uh we're gonna have one good thing from you and then i'm gonna just kind of recap what we talked about and then head out for the week yeah, I uh, I belong to a group on Facebook uh, that's a Pennsylvania. Oh, let me just sorry, let me just clarify. I feel like I just kind of threw it out there for the listeners. Oh. We want to end with one good thing that happened yeah. this week. I feel like I just kind of, I want to set you up more. It's- so this is <laughs> this is one good thing that happened either this week. Gretchen, what's one Yay. good thing that happened to you? These people are awesome. And I, I love this page. We um, have been looking forward to these past few weeks all winter long. We are finally able to start our indoor seeds. And I planted mine last week and my tomatoes are already about two inches tall. And I'm nice. super excited about it. Wow. Fresh vegetables. Mm-hmm. Hopefully yeah. we can, hopefully I get to share some of those. So yes, I will make sure Gretchen that I, as we wrap up the show, number one, I just want to go back just real quick. My quote that I like, Mr. Rogers, there's one thing Mm. that evil cannot stand forgiveness. Let's remember that as we go forward. But maybe if you give me some vegetables, I'll give you things like this cool research, the new sticker, 
Ooh. Oh, you mean we I don't just get now. one of those? <laughs> well, yeah, you do. But it was more for the listeners. So if anyone knows me and wants stickers to plaster wherever you want to plaster them, feel free to let me know and I'll get you some uh, some research and new stickers. But uh, yeah, we also have T-shirts. So they'll yeah, be coming out soon too. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, we're still, it's we already exciting. have fake sponsors. So now we have T-shirts for to, to back up our <laughs> fake sponsorships. It's great. They're not, the fake sponsorships don't pay for the T-shirts. But, no, uh, they know, definitely don't. <laughs> Um, all right. So in the future though, speaking of sharing this podcast, if you see me, ask me for a sticker, I'll give it to you. If you, uh, come on the show, I may give you a t-shirt. Um, but if you want to become a guest, feel free to let us know because I want to, I actually want to find people. The first two people I tend to agree with, um, I want to find people I want to argue with. So if there's anyone that disagrees with me, uh, which I'm, (laughs) there's plenty I've found in my life that people (laughs) that disagree with me who want to come on and have a discussion, feel free to let me know. Um, and just reach out. If you go to researchnews.com, there is a uh, link there. We can actually sign up to be a guest and tell me and tell us what you want to talk about and we can see if it's a good fit. So uh, with that being said, I think that's all my stuff. Share this podcast, check us out, researchnews.com. You can subscribe on Spotify if you want to listen to the audio or join us next week as we do it live on Facebook. Gretchen, anything to say to wrap up? Nope. Bye, everybody. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we will see you again next week on Research the News. Bye.